Yeah, that's one of the main reasons that when I started doing legal work with Title Work, I just decided to do everything on a flat fee. Because mm. I don't want people not to call me because yeah, they feel like point. they're ramping up a bill early. You yep. know, a lot of my clients, you know, like you, Lee, and other people, they'll call me for deals that I'm not even involved with. Or, yeah. Hey, I might sell in a year. I don't feel for those kind of questions. I don't want to. I want you to feel, I want you to come with me for everything because yep. my job's easier because I know everything that's going on with you and your company. Don't be afraid to get with us early. Welcome to the Threefold Real Estate Investing Podcast. This is the podcast where you'll not only learn how you can achieve massive success in multifamily real estate investing, but also how you can simultaneously pursue great relationships with your family and a better walk with God. You can achieve financial freedom through real estate investing without sacrificing the relationships that mean the most to you. Now, here's your host, Lee Yoder. Welcome back, Threefold listeners. I hope you're having a great week this week. Uh, spring is here in Ohio, so it's rainy and windy and cold sometimes, but warm sometimes. So uh, we've got another great guest today. Rob Calabrese is joining us from right here in Cincinnati. Uh, really thrilled to have Rob on the show because I've worked with him a lot. I think they have uh, he has the best title company in Cincinnati and Dayton. It's who I always try to use, and uh, he's really helped me out. Uh, so we'll get into all that, but a little bit about Rob, and then we'll bring him in. He is the division director for Prominent Title Agency's Commercial Real Estate Division, like I said, right here in Cincinnati, being a licensed attorney and title agent in Ohio, Kentucky. Uh, Rob has a strong knowledge of the complex world of commercial real estate and a wealth of experience in multifamily, industrial, and retail transactions. Prominent Title is a full-service title and escrow company licensed in Ohio, Kentucky, um, several other states around. They handle commercial transactions of all types and sizes including multifamily, retail, industrial, hotels, medical buildings, anything, golf courses, uh, all the above. They are very experienced and efficient in handling large portfolios, including multiple properties and or multi-states, as well as entity transfers in Ohio. So a lot to take in there. Rob, we'll dig into all that, but thanks so much for coming today, man. Uh, happy to have you. Thanks for having me, Lee. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. So, Rob, tell us real quick. Maybe just take us back. How did you get started in the in the title business? Uh, were you were you looking to get into it? Just just tell us a little bit about the the Genesis story for you. So basically, um, when I was in law school, um, I got a job with the title company, just closing loans at night, trying to find okay. you know income to pay for having a baby and a family and everything while in law school. And um, when I was kind of getting done with law school, I wanted to be a big law firm attorney, win court cases, murder mm -hmm. trials, whatever. And um, I started just learning the title industry and they didn't really have a commercial division. So I went in there um, after about one week, the lady that ran the commercial division quit. And I said, look, you guys don't have one. I said, there's nothing for me to lose here. Let me just figure it out. Meet some guys my age, you know, give me a shot. Um, so I worked there for about eight years, brought wow. that to be the biggest um, branch of Stewart in the nation. I had uh, all the national companies from Stewart, other divisions sending me deals. And then things just didn't work out. Politics of being with a big company, you know, stock exchange type company, cutting fees, sure. cutting stuff. And so I said, I could do this on my own. I've got a great client base. Um, and they wished me well and said, you know, good luck. And so I met the people that own Prominence Residential, Joe and Debbie Brooks, who are just great people, family owned and operated. And they said, look, we've heard, we've heard your name. We know you're good at what you do. Here's your commercial division. Run it yourself. Hire your staff. Do what you got to do and make us proud. And so I just celebrated my 10th anniversary at Prominent Title. Awesome. Um, you know, the commercial division is my baby. I run it how I want. I I take care of the clients first and foremost, and um, that's kind of how I got here. And, uh, you know, the truth is a lot of people I work with, like you, Lee, and other people, they've become my friends. I want to see them successful. In yeah. turn, I'm successful. The company's successful. And really, it's just one of those things that I, I love my job. I get to quarterback the deals. I get yep. to be, uh, you know, the ringleader trying to get all these people kind of reined into what we need to do. And um, it's been great. So I, I love that's what awesome. I do from the outside. And people might think it's boring, but it's hectic day to day. It's, it's a new, I learned something new almost every day and I've been doing it for <laughs> I bet. You know, 18 years now or so. Yeah. Yeah. That, oh, it's a really interesting background, Rob. And um, yeah, I love that you, you had the confidence to jump in and, and, and take some, on something like that. And then obviously I had a ton of success with it. And then that kind of came to an end and you, you jumped in and did it again. Um, so man, it just shows you your work ethic and, and uh, the skill, talent, and then the ability to put together a team too. Cause I know you guys have have a team there. It's like a well-oiled machine, man. Anytime we come in, there's a lot going on, but um, you know, we always feel like you guys are prioritizing us as well and, and uh, that our deal is important. Um, and you, yeah, like you said, you're quarterbacking across the finish line. Um, Rob, you know, one thing I think about is, is how, you know, not only are you guys getting the work done 
for us and helping us get it across the finish line. But you're, I always feel like you're kind of protecting us as well, because, you know, if you don't know, most um, commercial tra- transactions, all, actually almost all of them, there's just one broker involved. So if I'm buying a deal, I don't have my own broker working with me. I'm really just working with the broker uh, that the seller has chosen to help sell their deal. So a lot of times I don't feel like I have somebody on my side. So Rob, a lot of times if I can get you guys to be the title company, then I feel like you have... Uh, I have your guys' support and you looking over the documents. And then when we sell, I feel the same way, just like you're making sure things are done the right way. Can you talk about that, Rob, about what goes into that and then how, how you guys make sure that like everything's on the up and up, all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, and that both parties are are protected and you know that the transaction goes off as it should and the seller and buyer are both kind of protected and things go as as, as expected for each of them. Sure. So um, you know, first thing I'll say about commercial real estate is, it's always a good idea to have an attorney on your side. Mm -hmm. Um, In this general area, not every buyer and seller gets an attorney on their side. Um, I do wind up representing a lot of my buyers or sellers on deals um, and and put the attorney hat on as well. But let's just say I don't have the attorney hat on. I'm just the title agent. Um, You know, in the end, our job is to make sure, legally speaking, that your buyer gets good title. And so we are making sure that all the I's are dotted and T's are crossed on the seller side. We're making sure there's no issues on the buyer's side side. Yeah. And, and one of the things I like to do too is, you know, my legal brain is part of my advertising, right? So mm-hmm. having people come in that are buying just a four unit and they don't want to go spend money on an attorney, but they do need someone to hold their hand and watch out for them. I do a little bit of free legal work just okay. as, nice. hey, we want to be your title company. You know, so we, I do do more than most people. I mean, when my customers have to go somewhere else because a seller directs title or something, they're like, Rob, they're making us do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, yeah, you're supposed to do that. I just do it for you. <laughs> I'm, I want to make your life easier, you know? Yeah, so yeah, I sure. spoil my clients in that regard. But, yep. but yeah, we are looking out for both sides. And sometimes, you know, being an attorney, sometimes I'm bridging the gap between a buyer and a seller and they're an argument about something. And I can say, hey guys, just as my two cents, this is right and wrong. This is the norm. This is the common custom. And yep. sometimes like the name, you know, attorney by your name, just hold some weight. So we really do want to make it a priority to make sure everyone's protected, that everyone knows what they're doing, you know, because in the end we are an insurance company and my job is to not have title claims and not, and just yeah. by making sure the buyers and sellers are both protected and doing everything right, that limits everything and everyone's happy. So that's just how I, you know, having not really been trained by anyone, you know, like I said, I had one week of training and then I've been on my own. Um, and so I just know what people need, what they want. And um, I'm happy to do the extra work to get it done. Yeah, no, I've definitely witnessed that. Yeah. And I think if you were doing something wrong after 18 years, it would have already come back to uh, bite you there, Rob. So obviously you learned the right way and you've been doing it the right way. Um, I just, you know, I'm just thinking of a couple of examples. I know um, if you can remember, Rob, one time, you know, we were working with a potential uh, buyer of one of our properties out of Florida. And it just seemed kind of like, man, is this guy legit? I, you know, I don't even know if I want to go down this path. And, and so I just brought you in and like, hey, this is a contract and you would kind of recognize them. And just all of a sudden having you on the side, I was like, okay, if if this is going to go through and, and Rob's on it, then, then I'm feeling good about that. So I, I can speak to how that goes. And then, you know, now people are trying to get creative. So we're looking at, you know, seller financing because, you know, bank financing is not so great anymore. Interest rates are high. So sellers, you know, they still want their price, but they realize uh, it's maybe not feasible for buyers with higher interest rates. So they're willing to get creative and do some seller financing. But I mean, that's new to me. So, you know, we're actually, you know, even kind of working on a deal like that. And I just bring it to Rob, like, all right, Rob, you know, and I know I jumped on a call with you and I'm like, man, basically like, you got to help me feel good about this because this feels, you know, scary to me, but having you guys on our side and, and knowing that you guys are going to do the close and make sure everything's on the up and up. And again, kind of you putting on that attorney hat too, man, it just gives, um, gives me a lot of peace knowing that I'm working with you guys on it. All right. So Rob, if, if I, um, if I'm getting ready to sell a property, I've, I've, I've picked my broker. I, I know I want to sell with you guys. Um, what, just maybe a little bit of like the, just the high level, the steps um, that, that are you know going to happen before the closing. So what are some things I need to get in order and get ready? When do I need to bring you guys in, Rob? Because um, I'll tell you, you know, everybody wants to, wants to close on time if, if possible. Um, but a lot of things have to happen. A lot of boxes have to get checked. So I'm set, let's, let's start with, I'm the seller. I'm selling my property. Sure. Contact you, Rob. You know, what are some things I'm gonna have to get in order? How, how does that process go? Yeah. So first and foremost, in our area, Cincinnati, Dayton area, the typical uh, common custom is the buyer pays for the title insurance, the buyer picks the title company. So as a seller, you may not have a say so. Um, What I'd like to do if you're the seller is you send me the contract, I'll review it for you. I'll try to put prominent title in there to see if they have any objections. Um, And if they do, if they really have a title company they want to use, then I'd recommend that we handle, you know, the seller attorney portion for you and hold your hand through the process and get everything together for you. I do a flat fee of $2,500 for seller rep. 
So let's just nice. say the buyer has to use their title company and you just want somebody to look out for you. That's a flat fee I charge and you can call me. We'll get everything together for you. But what you really want to put together is you want to have your operating agreement. You want to have your employer identification number, your EIN. Um, yep. You want to give your bank a heads up that you're going to be paying off the bank in case there is, you know, a lot of times these days is a partial release, which people don't think about. You know, you have a blanket mortgage on three or four properties, but you're only selling one. Well, if you don't order the payoff until a week beforehand, there's a kind of a complicated system as to making sure you have enough collateral left to yeah. release this piece of collateral. So you want to kind of get a heads up. Also, if you're selling a big deal, you may have agency debt where you need to give 60 days notice. Mm. Um, so it's mm. not, you know, and the and the, the title company is not normally going to do that. It's usually on the seller to order the payoff um, or to tell us to order the payoff. But with my knowledge, I know, hey, you've got a debt, you know, your debt's with Arbor. We need 60 days notice. We better contact them yep. now and get that taken care of. Yeah. Um, so those are the things that I like to think of ahead of time. But the only other thing I'd point out is, you know, entity transfers are very popular in Ohio. Chances are that a buyer is going to want to do an entity transfer. They're very simple um, on a seller side of things. So, you know, if people get nervous, don't understand entity transfers. So I'd be happy to explain that to them of just, you know, creating a new LLC. You're going to sell that new LLC to them. And you'll be a member of that new LLC for just a moment when you do the deed. And that's what doesn't show a sales price. So on a seller side, they worry and they think, okay, what's this due to my taxes? The answer is nothing. You still, everything reports the same way. So don't be scared when the buyer wants to do an entity transfer. It's not a big deal. Um, we'll review the documents for you. We'll make sure everything is correct in there. Um, yeah. The only other thing I point out is, you know, with people buying in partnerships, when you go to sell, you may want a 1031 exchange, which I'm sure most of your listeners are, are aware of that. But you know, you have to keep the same entity. So what we're running into a lot right now is, you know, Lee, you bought the property with three friends and mm -hmm. now you're selling. You and one friend want to tenth their exchange. But the other two just want to get bought out. It's very complicated to do an exchange that way. It can be done, but we need to get with the exchange company and kind of change the LLC setup a month before closing. So yeah, if you ever yep. have that where you're with partners, but not all the same partners are going into the next deal, that's something we want to get ahead of and uh, start the paperwork on because the less notice you have on that, the more expensive and and uh, risky it is to meet that deadline. You want to do it the right way. Yep, yep. So I want to dig into a couple of those things, Rob. You hit on a lot of good points. So the buyer typically gets to choose the title company. And that kind of makes sense to me intuitively because the buyer is the one that maybe feels a little bit more at risk. They're the one taking on this new property and, and want to make sure there's a clean title. And like the seller is, is just going to get paid off and walk away. I mean, if anything wasn't done correctly, like the seller's like, see ya, sorry, you know, I, I got my money. I'm, I'm, I'm down the road, right? It's the it's the buyer that's going to be left holding the bag. So it kind of makes sense to me. Is that kind of the idea behind it that the buyer is the one that really kind of needs needs the protection and needs to feel comfortable yeah. with the title company to make sure they're getting a clean title? It is. I mean, in the end, we issue a policy to the buyer. That's the main thing we do. Of all the hats I wear, of all the things I do, in the end, my job is to make sure the buyer has a clean title policy, that there's no issues. But that being said, although that makes sense, in Columbus, the seller pays for title, which mm. just, okay. just is the way it is there. I mean, now with the theory thinking there is that the seller is the one that really if something's going to go wrong. It's probably something the seller did, right? The seller didn't pay a bill. The seller didn't have yep. the right people sign the LLC. You know, something the seller did wrong is probably the reason why the buyer has a title issue. So the theory is in the Columbus area is like, hey, I feel so good about me giving you a good title that I'm going to pay for the insurance for you to be insured. So really, when you get and you, as you get out of Ohio, you do other states, you know, contact me and I will tell you what the common custom is in every area because okay. it really does vary. Sure. Um, but yes, around here, if we're talking the Cincinnati Dayton area, you know, the buyer picks. Now, the only thing I would tell you is, and I try to stick my neck out there a little bit. We've got a lot of like New York investors investing in this area. Um, I have not had good, you know, um, good feelings with the the New York title companies. I've had yeah. no problem. So I don't mind the New York investors, but I make sure they're going to use prominent title or someone here local just nice. because yeah. I don't, I want this to go smoothly for you as if I'm representing you as the seller. Right. And sure. I want to make sure that all goes well. And I haven't had good feedback, good content, you know, things on a timely basis from certain title companies. So I'll tell you that right up front, like, Hey, yeah. good deal here, but they really want to use a title company that I don't trust. Let's see if they'll change. And if they won't make your own decision, but you might have some headaches if you decide to go with this buyer. Um, yeah. Yeah. So good I'll point be able to there. advise that. And, and I'm very straightforward. I tell you what I think and you can take it or leave it. You know, my job is to give you advice as an attorney and the title company kind of sure. keep you, uh, keep you advised. Yeah, 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 of course. So you mentioned you mentioned a lender. I know that's a big piece because yeah, everybody most sellers are always going to have have um, a loan on the deal, so they're going to be involved, and then the buyers are going to be getting a loan. So I can see why that's important to to um, talk to you early on. And and again, 
the banks are what takes so long, right, Rob? Like I always tell, I always tell the sellers, you know, when we're buying a deal, I say, look, I can promise you we're going to be ready in 60 days to buy your property, but I cannot promise you the bank's going to be ready because they always seem to take longer. So I, you know, you mentioned like, hey, you know, 60 day payoff, let's get these things rolling at the beginning. I, man, I have experienced that. Like you got to get that stuff going early because the banks are what takes so long. So that all, it makes uh, a lot of sense to me. Then you mentioned a couple of things I want to hit on because they are important here in Ohio. I think other states as well, but the entity transfer, the idea there, Rob, is just that you're, you are able to um, keep your uh, purchase price from being disclosed correctly. Correct, Rob? Yeah, and, that's, and then, the, that's the main key. Yeah. Okay. The property is actually sold to an entity and then you form another entity that buys the entity. So you're like technically not buying the property, you're buying an entity. Is that right. in for my terms? Yeah. I mean, for all intents and purposes, you're buying the property, right? I mean, as yeah. far as your tax are concerned, everything like that. But from a legal perspective, we're going to create a brand new entity and we're going to have the seller put it in that entity. And then you're going to buy the entity from them. So what that does is when that deed goes through from the seller to the new entity, it goes through as an exempt transfer. Hey, seller one and buyer are the same company. Got the it. Same guy. Yeah. So we're not paying the transfer tax. We don't have to tell you how much you sold for. It was zero. He's just putting in a new LLC, right? Um, and then you buy the new one. And there's nothing in the state of Ohio that makes you state what you're paying for an LLC. So basically the county doesn't see any sales price. So when the county does see a sales price, they immediately say, okay, this sold for 3 million. We're going to tax it at 3 million. Because yep. right, I mean, it makes sense. What's the fair market value property? It's what someone will pay for. Whatever it, right? sold for. Yep. So now, yeah. And so if they don't see that sales price, then they don't automatically raise your taxes up. So I always caveat by telling people, look, the county can raise your taxes at any moment they want to. Sure. They think it's worth 3 million. They can make it 3 million. We're just not giving them the smoking gun yep. to say, this is 3 million. Please raise my taxes. Right. And it's been very effective for many years now. Um, I constantly have people call me and tell me that other attorneys are telling them that it's not going to work any longer. They're closing the loophole, but. I mean, I probably handle, you know, 40, 50 percent of all the transactions, uh, you know, in this area with any yeah. transfers. And I don't see that happening. I don't see the school okay. boards fighting anymore. I mean, they try to. But um, in the end, it's a it's a great tool to use. Yeah, um, it's a tool it, there. You might as well use it. Yeah, that, that would be my thought on it, too. Exactly. Good. Okay. Well, Rob, and then another thing you hit on is 1031 exchanges. So that's kind of getting in the weeds a little bit, but but very important. So, you know, if I'm getting ready to sell a property. Uh, if people aren't even uh, familiar with 1031, if I sell the property, but take all of the proceeds and all the money I had invested, and we just take all of that and buy another property, a like kind property, you know, I, I think it has to be, you know, more expensive property, then we didn't realize any gain because we put it right into the next property. So we pay no taxes on that gain. So it's a great way to defer taxes. So it doesn't get rid of them, but you can defer it. And um, I, I, you know, 1031, uh, buddy of mine says defer 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 die uh is the is the way to go so uh, i was gonna say it doesn't work unless you do that i mean you're gonna yeah. get caught in the bag unless you just do it until yeah. your inheritance tax kicks in so that's what you do it, yep that, that that's the way to do it now i mean you can you know yeah so they're gonna come back after those taxes i still think you know what can you do with that money during that time so you can still say it's worth it and all that but um rob if we do want to do that you, you hit on a really good point because you know we syndicate property so we yeah we may have 30 investors in our deal so a lot of people will just say, hey, it's just, you just really can't, you can't do a 1031 out of a syndication. But I know people that do. Um, I've heard of people that are doing it. I know it's kind of difficult. I, what you said, Rob, I, I think is the key that in essence, from a high level, the same entity. So if we have an LLC, you know, let's say we own a hundred unit and we call it Dayton 100. Well, if Dayton 100 LLC owns this 100 unit and we're going to sell it and we want a 1031 into a 200 unit in Cincinnati, it's Dayton 100 that's going to buy that 200 unit in Cincinnati, correct? And if if that entity is not going to say the same, well, it needs to say the same, right? Like if not all the investors want to go in, we, we need to kind of take care of that before we sell is what you're saying, because that entity that sells needs to be the exact same entity that buys. Is that correct? Can you help me out there? Correct. Yeah. So we just did, I did my first one of a 1031 with the syndication. Okay. And it was very complex. We got them over to a, a tax attorney who does syndication. Okay. And basically what they had to do is they had to get the new set of investors lined up and funded and basically fund the old set of investors um, kind of simultaneously with closing, which was very complicated because you can have 30 investors. So you got to yeah. you know, yeah. get all this new money in and fund all these old 30 um, while moving entities around. So it was very complex. It can be done. So, you know, if you and, and a couple of partners are the main people and you got 30 silent investors and those 30 want to cash out, 
it's doable. So that's what I'm trying okay. to say here. It's, okay. it's doable. You just need to get ahead of it. It's not simple. It's expensive. It's complicated. You know, it's probably ten, twenty thousand dollars in legal fees sure. to do that. But you know, I mean, if you made a ton of money and it makes sense, um, you know, there's ways to do it. So anything sure. could really work in a ten thousand exchange as long as you plan ahead. Um, that's yeah. kind of what I would say to your audience here today. Um, you know, I have a couple different 1031 companies that I refer that are local, that are also tax attorneys that do really good work. Um, and, you know, we'll work hand in hand with them to make sure they know everything about your entity, who's staying in, who's going out. Um, and this can be done the same thing with just, you know, two people buy a property and one wants to sell and one doesn't. Um, yeah. You know, there's, there's a bunch of different yeah. ways. But yes, the simple answer is if you can keep the same group together and they do it again. It's a lot easier, obviously. Sure. But the yep. same entity has to buy. If you're not going to do that, then there's some maneuvering on the back end, you know, before the closing that we can do. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like the theme here, Rob, is just engage, you know, you engage your title company, engage your attorney, engage prominent title early and often and talk with you guys before. And because it's almost like it's kind of like tax planning is, is what it's making me think of. Like, you don't want to just come to your tax guy on, you know, April 10th and say, hey, I got a whole bunch of confusing things that we need to think about before we file my taxes. It's like, those right. are summer conversations. And so, yeah, you're not coming to a title company you know, six months before, but it's like, that's why you tax plan because some things like, if you didn't make the right decisions early on, then it's too late. Like, like you're saying, if you're like, well, Rob, I'm on a contract, we're going to sell in 30 days. I want to do an entity transfer. I want to, you know, do the t- payoff. You're like, oh, like that was 30 days ago, man. Like, you know, you, you should have done that then. And at I the very least, right. it's going to extend your closing. So, well, you're not closing on time if you want to do all this. So it should have came to you guys earlier. Yeah, that's one of the main reasons that when I started doing legal work with title work, I just decided to do everything on a flat fee because mm-hmm. I don't want people not to call me because yeah, they feel good like point. they're ramping up a bill early. You yep. know, a lot of my clients, you know, like you, Lee, and other people, they'll call me for deals that I'm not even involved with. Or, yeah. Hey, I might sell in a year. I don't bill for those kind of questions. I don't want to. I want you to feel I want you to come with me for everything because my yep. job's easier because I know everything that's going on with you and your company. And so that's really one of the keys too is don't be afraid to get with us early. You know, title company fees are basically flat fees. They're all fixed rates, state of Ohio regulated. Um, my legal fees are fixed rates. Um, they're very fair. I, you know, no one's ever complained about rates because oh, I'm yeah, not with a very law fair. firm. So yep. you know, I'm not gonna have to charge, you know, every time you email me, I charge forty dollars. No, there's a flat fee. We'll talk about it and you'll, you'll, you'll be good with it. I promise. Yeah. Um, yeah. that's really the key. Yeah. If you want to sell, if you got uh, somebody in, in interested, um, you know, anything at all, just reach out to me. I love to be a source of knowledge. I know, sure. I know people in every industry and we want to be part of your team. That's really what I really want to be, you know, that we're not just the third party you have to use. We want to be part of your deal team yeah. and part of who you trust, you know, and that's yep. the key. Oh, that's exactly how I think about it. I mean, we, we, we brought, you know, se- several properties, we've sold several properties and I, I, I'm so I'm not an expert in title stuff. I'm not I'm not an attorney, so I, that's exactly how I think of it, Rob. That okay, well, hey, we got Rob on our team for this transaction for this, and so our team's solid. We're good. Hey, three full listeners, just want to take a quick second here to promote our sponsor, a company that I'm a big fan of. Done a lot of business. I'm a very happy customer of Prominent Title Agency. They are a full service title and escrow company, licensed in Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, Michigan, and Florida. They handle commercial transactions of all types and sizes, including multifamily, retail, industrial, hotels, medical buildings, restaurants, gas stations, golf courses. They are very experienced and efficient in handling large portfolios, including multiple properties and or multi-states, as well as entity transfers in Ohio. My guy over there is Rob Calabrese. Uh, He is the division director uh, for Prominent Title Agency's commercial real estate division. Uh, Being a licensed attorney and title agent in Ohio and Kentucky, Rob has strong knowledge of the complex world of commercial real estate. Uh, he also offers offers legal services in all aspects of commercial real estate. Uh, guys, I, I, I've worked with Rob a lot. I'm, you know, we, we're getting a deal under contract now and, and I told the broker, I said, man, I really want to work with Prominent Title. Just trust those guys over there. Uh, they, they're great, they're quick. Love working with those guys. Now, back to the show. Um, hey, this is a, a question I ask all my um, guests and this is gonna be kind of an interesting take from your perspective because you've seen so many of them, at least, you know, a, a piece of what they're doing. But in your experience, Rob, what what's a, a key ingredient um, that allows for someone to be a, a successful real estate investor? You know, I think the biggest creating ingredient is to know what you don't know. And it's one of the things mm-hmm. that made one of the first things I was told when I was starting my own company, basically, and coming here, you know, you're good at what you do and you're yeah. good at maybe you're good at the numbers. Maybe you're good at, 
you know, relations with the sellers and finding the deals, you know, but know what you're good at and get a team around you of the stuff that you don't want to know or need to know. And, and you want to focus yep. on what you do. Right. I mean, for uh, syndicators, there's guys that are great at money raising. They may not know much about anything else, but they can raise money like there's no tomorrow. There might be other guys that can see the value add and can, you know, walk into a building and say, we can split this out and make it 20 units and we can do this. Yep. And we can do that. You know, really oh, yeah. stay in your lane, know what you're good at, figure out what you're good at and hone in on that and have a team around you that does everything else. You know, don't try yeah. to do negotiate your own contracts. Don't try to, you know, do the broker side of things and really think, you know, try to figure out the numbers and stuff like that. Have a good broker, have a good title, have a good attorney, you know, Love get that. with the right people, you know, and yeah. get a good, good people on anything. I mean, you need, need the guy, night guy, the right guys to rehab, the right people to manage. I mean, these are all key ingredients, but yep. I think when somebody tries to do everything, that's where they really falter. Um, you know, and that would be my advice is always yeah. just, just oh, grab man. yourself the right team. Yeah, absolutely, man. Couldn't agree more, Rob. That's really good stuff. Really well said. Um, well, hey, let, let me ask you, kind of flip that question a little bit. Um, this is for you, Rob, in, in your own experience. Um, not that you know you do exactly what I do, but you know you're in real estate. You've got a busy job. You're you're running a, running a company, um, extremely busy. Rob, what's a key ingredient to making sure that you're keeping your priorities straight? I know you're a family man. I know being a great husband and a great dad is extremely important to you. What are you doing? Maybe what are key ingredient or some key things that you're doing to make sure that you're having success in that area? while you're also having a lot of success with your company? You know, that's a great question. And and I will tell you that family's my number one. I have five children, a beautiful wife. You know, uh, we're going on New York City this weekend. I'm going to spend time with all the kids. Oh, and it's going to awesome. be crazy. And, yeah. and, um, and life is busy. You know, for me, it's just making sure that certain priorities are priorities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm answering my phone all night long. I'm emailing people. But at the same time, you know, I make sure that I have time for my family and time for my kids. You know, I, I like to leave here by five thirty six o'clock every night. You know, I don't want to work till 10 o'clock at night. Um, you know, uh, me and my wife have a set time where the kids are in bed and we're watching, you know, a show at 10 o'clock every night, you know, or yep. stuff like that. So, yep. you know, I'm not going to miss a soccer game, you know, things like that. Like that, that's a good part of my job. I can do most of my stuff for myself when I don't have to be at my desk. Right. You know, I'm always available. And you know, one of the keys I used to work at four in the morning till four till, till midnight. Um, but I do have what you were talking about before. I have a great staff now. I yeah. trust my staff with anything. So I kind of tell myself, you know, in the last couple of years, I've become a fire putter outer. My job is if stuff's hitting the fan, let me know. I'll make sure it gets taken care of. But I know, yeah, that's good. Do, you know, the little things you want to try to delegate the little things out that, you know, you're not bombarded by stuff somebody else can do. And everyone on the team's got a role and they can cover you and you can cover them. You know, if somebody has got a kid thing, I'm like, go, I'll, I'll, I'll do the stuff that, you know, most managers would never do. I'll do it. You know, and if they same awesome. thing, if I've got to be somewhere, you know, hey guys, I gotta be somewhere tonight. Will you stay tonight and knock this out and make sure Lee gets a settlement statement because I got a I got a soccer game tonight. You yeah. know, so the truth is work is great and and uh but family comes first, you know. The yeah. chance you get your kids smile and be at a soccer game when they score, oh, you know, yeah. I'm not missing yeah. those things. Yep. So yep. yeah, it's really good, Rob. I mean, I you know, I I experienced the same challenge. Like um, I have a ton of flexibility in my job. Um, and, and I can do most of it from my phone just like you. So I can kind of go be wherever I, I, I need to be with my family. But then, you know, there's calls that come in, there's emails that come in. So, it, you know, it's a, it's a challenge. Um, so I hear that and what you're saying, but um, I mean, I wouldn't trade it. Um, like you said, it, it's great to have that flexibility to, to be where you need to be, where you want to be with your family. And, you know, if you're answering some calls, like you kind of fit that in, you know, when it makes sense, but you're, you know, prioritizing your clients. And then I'll definitely say too, Rob, I mean, man, one thing I've seen, I mean, there's certain people, I'll, I'll put other people on the email. When I'm emailing you, I'll put somebody else on it from your team. Cause I'm like, I know they can answer it too. I don't know if Rob has time, but like, I, I trust your team. I'm like, you know, she might get me the answer too. So I'll put somebody else like whoever has time, you know, I feel, for, I feel comfortable, you know, I'm getting back. So that's really great, man, that you've been able to build that team. So um, it's true. I'm truly blessed to have the team really. I mean, I yeah. think every day for just, you know, every client tells me, you know, Hey, they're so, they do such a good job. And I've got my brother who works for me, who, you know, I'm an attorney. I'm a smart guy. My brother's the smartest person I've ever met. I mean, I'll go to him <laughs> half the time to like, Anthony, what do you think about this? Like, this doesn't even make sense to me. And he's just one of those guys, like he could probably win Jeopardy. And Jeez, uh, you know, he's, yeah, he's just one of those guys that just, just knows it. everything. He's a really smart guy. And and I love working with my brother. I've worked with him for almost 15 years now. Oh, cool. Next to me, and, and that's super cool. Um, My mom's retired. She comes in and helps out. So we got a little family. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I just love it. I really, I do love what I do. I mean. Oh, I can tell. It, yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just fun. I mean, it's it's a game to me. It's, it's getting deals done. It's making everyone, you know, I had a guy call me last night at 10 o'clock last night. Hey Rob, I got a deal. I need to close by noon tomorrow. Oh I my said, gosh. Mike, Mike, how am I going to close this by noon tomorrow? He's like, you've closed it before. I'm just getting an extra loan. I'm like, 
I'll make it happen. So this morning was actually a fun <laughs> game to see if we can close it by noon, and we did. Oh, my gosh. You know, and it just hey, kind of took it as a challenge, yep. you know. I know, yeah, that's the, the right way to do it, man. You're, you're the right man for the job. If you think that's a fun game, then you're yeah, yeah, right. you're doing the right thing, man. It yeah, might be warped for fun, but, you know. Yep. It yep. It is. Yeah. It, it is warped. You, you are a, a sick man, but you're at the right job. for it. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Rob, um, man, if, if people want to reach out and just prominent title agency spelled out.com, correct. Prominent title agency.com. You got that's it. That's the okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We'll put all that in the show notes. Of course. Um, Rob, before I let you go, I always like to ask my guests too, how might my listeners and I be praying for you in the coming weeks, anything going on with the family, anything, I guess, you got a trip coming up. Maybe you can use prayers for that, but yeah, I'm not really prayer for, for you. safe travel. I mean, uh, yeah. that would be great. You know, knock on wood, everybody is doing great. Everybody, I got, I got oh, a kid graduate college, kid graduate from high school. Wow. Um, yeah. Boy turning 16, all within the next like month of those things. And, uh, Jeez, you know, busy blessed. time, exciting time for you, man. Yeah. We are truly blessed. I mean, all prayers are always good. I'm actually, you know what? Like, you can pray for my grandmother. I'm going to see her. She's 94 years old. Oh, my um, goodness. I think it'll be the last time I'll ever get to see her. She's in New York. And she's, she's healthy, but she's ready to go, you know, she's yeah. happy. And so that's, we're making some that's time to make fun. sure we get out there for her and, and see oh, her good. again. So I that's appreciate awesome. that very much. That's awesome. Yeah, sure, sure, Rob. Wait, man, I appreciate you coming on. This has been extremely helpful. Um, I mean, you, you've, you've helped me already so much in, in, in so many deals, um, but, you know, forever great for all of But thanks for coming on, um, you know, educating me even more and, and my listeners. It's been really helpful. Thanks, Rob. That's awesome. Your company's great. You're great. I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks so much. Yeah, take care, Rob. All right, man. Thanks. Thank you for joining us for another great episode. I hope you'll take action on what you've learned today. If you enjoyed today's show, please consider leaving Lee a five-star rating and review. And check him out on threefoldrei.com. Until next time, 1 Timothy 6.17.